Hey, John. Uh, thanks for your response, and I definitely appreciate your critique of my critique of Minsky's artificial intelligence research. Um, and I agree that, uh, you know, we don't really know what consciousness is. But already when we frame it in that way, um, you know, when we ask the question, what is consciousness, we're probably, you know, covertly defining it, uh, looking for a certain kind of thing, um, or looking for a thing at all, whereas it may be, and, you know, I tend to believe that the case is that consciousness is a process, uh, more of a verb than a noun, so it's not another scientific object that we could gain empirical data about, at least not empiricism through the five senses. Um, so, you know, and you, you touched on this, that we need other ways of knowing other than the standard scientific method to get at uh, consciousness. Um, you know, even to call it a phenomenon, just based on the definition of phenomenon, means something shown by light, something which reflects light. Um, consciousness is, is that which sees, not that which is shown. Um, so really, it's not a phenomenon, it's the noumenon. It's, it's, uh, it's what's behind phenomena. Um, it's, you know, and Kant touched on this, that uh, really our ability to transcendentally apprehend uh, the world of phenomena is due to the fact that uh, the thing in itself is really the center of our consciousness. Um, but anyways, it's a bit of a tangent. Uh, the reason I think, or, or that I would criticize Minsky's approach is not so much Minsky himself as the whole artificial intelligence movement as it was, you know, drawn into and caught up in um, defense research during the Cold War and um, it, to me it represents more of the of the standard science that sees itself as uh, doing purely technical research and not having to worry about the implications of that research. Um, you know, any scientist willing to work for the Department of Defense really to produce weapons um, is not moving towards a more peaceful planet as far as I'm concerned. And if that's not at the forefront of their activities at the cutting edge of, you know, human ingenuity and, and intelligence, then, you know, I, I'm kind of put off by it. Um, but putting that aside, let's look at the actual project here of trying to create an emotional machine or an artificial intelligence um, you know, I, you've heard me make the distinction between autopoetic and allopoetic systems before, um, and that I don't think machines can be conscious, and that talking about a human being as though they're a machine is kind of, um, a put-down. Um, but, you know, we're, we're, we're dealing with words here, so let's, let's, you know, investigate what these words mean, and uh, I think when you look at, you know, the etymology surrounding the word machine, um, it essentially refers to the structure of, um, you know, some contrivance made of parts in order to get some type of work done, some type of mechanical work. Um, and the word is also associated with, um, with a trick, a contrivance, um, you know, just dating back to the 16th century when, when guys would, uh, build these elaborate, um, robotic people that could play chess against a, a real human opponent. Um, little did the human opponent know that actually below this mechanical uh, humanoid figure was a real living being responding to the, the chess moves. Um, so it was a trick. And, you know, just uh, the history surrounding the use of the word machine is why I don't like to apply it to living organisms. Um, because, you know, the difference between one of the differences between an autopoetic and an allopoetic uh, system is that an autopoetic system creates itself. An allopoetic system is created by uh, an outside intelligence. Um, now, it, it, it may be the case that when some type of robotic system 
become so ingrained in our daily interaction, um, when we build up a history of interaction with it, it just becomes uh, a part of our intersubjective uh, community. It becomes part of the world we share with others. And at that point, for all intents and purposes, that machine would be conscious because, you know, to my mind, and I think you agree, consciousness isn't something produced in here. It's something that's, you know, it permeates the world. It's what we share as living, speaking, interacting, uh, intentional agents. Um, and not just humans, but, you know, we share with all animal species, all organisms. Um, and, um, you know, we're, we're just, we're dealing with conventions, really, when we talk about words, what words to use, and whether or not humans are machines or not. And, you know, if you define the word machine in a certain way, then sure, humans are machines. But, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, I'll post links to the, the etymology of machine and, uh, you know, you can see why the way I relate to the word suggests that it may not necessarily be the best to apply to what living organisms uh, are or do because the process of living is a process. It's not some substance. Um, it's not a series of parts. It's how the parts interact. Um, so I guess I'll, uh, I'll, I'll leave it there and um, let me know what you think.